Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. Let's talk GPU prices. And this month's update is a very, very interesting one because of two major factors. One, Nvidia just launched new GeForce 40 series graphics cards and two, GPU mining is now dead. We're expecting price movement to continue throughout the upcoming fourth quarter and it all starts with these two developments which have major implications for GPU pricing. But have these factors had any impact in the market yet? Well, let's find out. Firstly, Nvidia's new graphics cards, which we covered in a separate video if you're interested in a full breakdown. But basically, these new GPUs are expensive. We've got a GeForce RTX 4090 coming on October 12th for 1600 US dollars, followed by the RTX 4080 16 gigabyte at $1,200 and RTX 4080 12 gigabyte at $900, both expected in November. These are high prices that in the current market would be two of the three most expensive GPUs you can buy. In our announcement analysis video, I talked about how these RTX 40 series cards do appear to give an improvement in price to performance ratio when compared to the RTX 30 series MSRPs. For example, the RTX 4090 is substantially faster than the RTX 3090 according to Nvidia's data while only costing $100 more. However, this way of thinking is outdated when we look at the current market where the RTX 3090 is selling for below $1000. Personally, I don't think the MSRP for a two-year-old product is all that relevant right now. What Nvidia appears to have done is priced the RTX 40 series at roughly the same price to performance level as current products. Right now we have the RTX 3090 Ti at around $1,000, RTX 3090 slightly below that, RTX 3080 Ti around $800 and the RTX 3080 series around the $750 mark. Based on the performance numbers NVIDIA showed at their announcement, the RTX 40 series should slot right into that current pricing structure, though of course we'll have to wait for independent reviews to figure out exactly where it lands. This presents an interesting situation for current gen graphics card pricing. If the RTX 40 series isn't providing a substantial increase in price to performance ratio, there is less incentive for graphics card prices to fall for older models, although across the high end prices have already fallen below MSRP. Is this a deliberate strategy from Nvidia to limit losses from the still high amounts of RTX 30 series inventory left to be sold? By keeping the RTX 30 series still somewhat attractive to buyers, that could be the case, although at the cost of weakening the hype and demand for the new series. It's a fine line to tread and we'll only find out if they're successful in the weeks after launch. So the question from here is how much of an impact the announcement of RTX 40 series GPUs will actually have on graphics card pricing? Well, based on current data at Newegg for Nvidia's lineup, the launch has caused prices to drop for flagship models in the days leading up to the announcement. Last month, the RTX 3090 and 3090 Ti were being sold for over $1,200 US, but right now those cards are down more around $1,000, having fallen in price by over 20%. When we look at the price trend for NVIDIA GPUs on the new market since March of this year, that's one of the largest drops we've seen. The RTX 3080 Ti has also fallen in price by 8%, but across the rest of NVIDIA's lineup there hasn't been much movement at all. In fact, for cards priced below $800, noting NVIDIA didn't announce any Ada Lovelace products at or below that price, there really hasn't been much price movement this month. The RTX 3080 series is flat, and the only other notable price declines were for the RTX 3060 Ti and RTX 3050, though both still sit above their supposed MSRP. The average price drop of 8% this month is pretty similar to the 6% drop last month. In fact, if we look at the longer term pricing trend for cards below $1,000, it's been relatively flat or slightly declining in the last three months for cards in the 3070 tier and below. I think this is due to expectations that Nvidia wouldn't be releasing new GPUs in this sort of category for some time. If there are no new products to reset price expectations, prices will probably remain flat. Even though there is still a lot of inventory left to be sold, I think the announcement of the RTX 40 series is unlikely to cause a huge price crash in the new GPU market beyond what has already occurred, especially so for the mid to lower parts of the lineup. Prices will likely keep falling slowly, but with the really expensive prices Nvidia debuted for new cards, and with many people believing they present poor or terrible value, things don't seem set for a significant shakeup, at least until AMD announces their new products on November 3rd. Speaking of AMD, has the RTX 40 series launch impacted pricing for their RX 6000 series? Not really, at least not beyond a steady trend for AMD GPU pricing. 
Part of this will be because AMD doesn't have any GPUs currently priced above $1,000, and really no cards even worth considering are priced above $700. This means the majority of AMD's lineup avoids the impact zone, so to speak, of the RTX 40 series, so we haven't seen any drastic price cuts in response. What is impressive with AMD's GPUs is that pretty much the whole lineup continues to fall at a good pace, relative to the more minor drops on the NVIDIA side. Cards like the RX 6700 XT, RX 6650 XT, and RX 6600 all fell in price by nearly 10% or more, plus we saw over 10% drops for the 6800 series while the RTX 3080 sat flat. A price increase for the RX 6600 did hurt AMD's average performance, though in practice the 6650 XT is taking its place for now. When looking at overall price trends, like with NVIDIA GPUs, the largest drops occurred before May. However, when we look at the sub $600 market more closely where most of AMD's cards sit, we can see a steady price decline for some models that is continuing up to this point. For example, the RX 6700 XT has dropped in price from $600 US in March to just $360 today, so that's a 40% price reduction. In contrast, NVIDIA's RTX 3060 Ti, which was $630 in March, is only $420 today, a 33% reduction. We also see the RX 6600 dropping from $400 in March to $230 today, a 43% drop, compared to the RTX 3050 going from $390 to just $275 today, which is a 30% drop. With all of this in mind, should you buy a new GPU right now? Certainly not at the high end, which has been our position for some time. Prices have not come down far enough to make those products attractive, even though Nvidia just revealed pretty expensive new GPUs. And even then, we're just over a month away from AMD's RDNA 3 reveal, so buying something right now without the full picture of next generation cards isn't a very wise idea, so now is absolutely the time to wait. I'd also recommend waiting if you're interested in a lower tier card, despite prices falling for some of AMD's products. I'm not expecting significant price drops over the next month or two in response to new GPU announcements, as those announcements will almost certainly be for higher end cards, but I also don't see a risk of prices going up in the mainstream market. So like with higher end shoppers, you're best off waiting for a full picture on next gen cards and hoping with fingers crossed that it causes a big price correction across the entire lineup. The other major shakeup that we're all waiting for is the influx of used GPUs to the market. This has been talked about for months now as the big factor set to crater GPU pricing, and it all centers around the transition of Ethereum from a proof-of-work cryptocurrency to proof-of-stake. That transition, called the merge, occurred about a week ago and has killed mining entirely for that coin. The flow-on effect has been the total destruction of mining profitability on consumer GPUs across the entire cryptocurrency space. There was always a risk that after the merge went through that another cryptocurrency would take the place of Ethereum as the go-to choice for miners and quickly just fill the hole it left. However, based on data from what to mine, that hasn't happened. They track a huge amount of coins and current data using up-to-date average electricity pricing for the USA suggests that it's currently unprofitable to mine on every single available GPU. And by unprofitable, I mean people buying these coins are losing a few cents every 24 hours and will continue to lose money doing so. Throw a party because mining is officially dead. With mining killed off, all those GPUs currently used for mining are now useless and the expectation is those used cards will flood the market at some point. We're talking a huge amount of GPUs here based on the total amount of power that was occupied for mining. So a week post merge, has this flood of GPUs begun? Looking at some data we captured comparing used prices on eBay for current generation GPUs before and after the merge, it doesn't appear as though we're seeing a huge price impact just yet. While the price of some models did fall by over 10%, the market average decline month on month was 8%, similar to the 7% drop we saw in the new market, which itself is pretty similar to the price drops across the last few months. It doesn't appear as though the full weight of used mining cards is having an impact yet, and sales volumes don't appear to have jumped substantially. This makes sense as we're just a week on from the death of mining and will take a while for various mining cards to be decommissioned and sold. Either that or mining cards are already being sold but not having a huge impact and I don't think that's the more likely of the stories. As for how much money you're saving going for a used GPU over a new GPU, right now we're looking at anything between an 8% discount on the low end to a 31% discount on the high end for the terrible RX 6500 XT. On average, used GPUs through eBay are 17% cheaper than buying new at Newegg, 
or when flipping that around, it'll cost you 21% more to get a new model. I'm interested to hear your thoughts on whether that's enough of a discount to go used. Personally, it doesn't feel like enough to me when we'll probably see that sort of price drop in the new market within two to three months, even at just the current steady pace we're seeing. When we look at older GPUs like the GeForce 20 series, it's a pretty similar story with a consistent price reduction this month in the used market. If we take a look at the data we've been capturing for the past year, it's a really interesting story with pricing peaking in the fourth quarter of 2021 before dropping drastically after that point. Most GPUs have more than halved in price in that period, although we're yet to see a huge drop month on month from a flood of used products. The G416 series saw more substantial price drops this month, 16% on average, although this is likely a correction to the no price drop that we saw last month. A lot of these products are genuinely very cheap at the moment, and while they don't support modern features like DLSS, I'd say that anything here is a better option than what you'll find for less than $160 US on the new market. Pascal Era cards, again, about a 7% price drop month on month, which is consistent with current pricing trends. This data is most useful for people looking to sell their card at the moment, as I wouldn't recommend anyone buy a card this old in 2022. There is some evidence of the death of mining impacting used AMD GPUs from the RX 5000 series. Prices for the RX 5700 XT and RX 5700 have come down massively this month, a 30% price drop, with these cards being almost exclusively used by miners due to their excellent mining performance. We can see from the pricing trend over the last year that after a few months of more modest declines, we're back to seeing a sharper decline for the 5700 series. It's pretty wild to think that in November of last year, the 5700 XT was going for $1,000 used and now can be found for less than $200 on average. That would sting for any owners that are yet to sell that GPU. Mixed results for older AMD products, there was quite a large price drop for the RX 580 8GB as well, given that card was also super popular for miners, but more typical drops for other products. Hopefully some of these large price drops for specific models in the last month or so will open up to bigger decreases across the whole market in the next month or two. So that does it for this month's pricing update. My general thoughts here is that it's a bit too soon to expect significant price movement based on the announcement of RTX 40 series GPUs and the death of cryptocurrency mining. But prices are continuing to fall at a steady pace across many products, both on the new and used markets, and appears a situation of supply well outstripping demand is here to stay for at least the next little while. There are some hints that a flood of used GPUs is beginning to head towards various marketplaces like we saw for some of those older AMD GPUs, so this may be a sign of what's to come. It doesn't appear as though the full volume of mining cards is on the market yet, roughly a week after the merge, but it'll have to happen at some point. Of course, some mining cards have already been sold in prior months in anticipation of mining ceasing to be a thing, probably the better move to be honest if you were a miner, though there is still a huge backlog to work through. It'll be very interesting to revisit this in a month and see how things have progressed further, especially from the situation on the mining side, and then again in November after the announcement of AMD's RDNA 3 GPUs. There are still so many things to play out in the last few months of 2022, and all of them are suggesting improvements for buyers. So. Hold out if you can and see what's in store. Anyway, that's it for this one. If you do appreciate our monthly GPU pricing updates, which again, lots happening, so we'll probably continue them for at least the next little bit, then please do consider subscribing to the channel and also supporting us directly on Patreon or Floatplane. That supports our independent testing. Uh, there's lots of testing coming up actually. We've got Zen 4, we've got uh, NVIDIA, RTX 4 series GPUs, we've got new Intel CPUs, lots of stuff coming up that's well worth being subscribed so you don't miss. So yeah, you'll get some nice bonuses like our Discord chat, uh, monthly live streams, behind the scenes videos, all sorts of good stuff. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.